Shogi is a Japanese game, so you'd expect a lot of the jargon that people use to be in Japanese, right? Well, thanks to the efforts of Shogi promoters like the late George Hodges, Hidechi, Karolina Stachinska, and Shogi fans all over the world, there's been a huge amount of English terms and phrases that you can use when talking about the game. Uh, Hidechi even went out of his way to compile an entire dictionary of Shogi terms, which you could buy on Amazon, by the way. However, even with all that, it's still a Japanese game, and you will end up hearing a lot of Japanese terms thrown around. Whether it's because they don't really have good translations, or because it adds some cultural flavor or nuance to the game. Uh, but here's a list of 10 Japanese phrases you should really get used to if you plan on taking part in the shogi community. Shogi, like a lot of traditional board games, is played between two players. Uh, most similar games use colors to distinguish the players apart, named after the color of the pieces they use. For example, white and black, or black and red if you're in China. In fact, black and white are also often used in translated shogi content, where the first player is called black and the second player white. But there's one problem with that usage in this game. All the pieces are the same color. Because of that, a lot of shogi players don't like using those terms, and rather than use player one and player two, which sounds kind of video gamey and weird, we keep the Japanese terms sente, which means form move, and gote, which means ladder move. This one's not really unique to shogi, but if you've never practiced a traditional Japanese art like karate, then the Don Q ranking system might be new to you. These are the set of ranks that you move up as you progress from beginner to really amazing player. Q, which means class, is the first set of ranks that you have to climb. Uh, you start at 15Q for a beginner, or 10Q depending on your teacher or website, and it goes up to 1Q. Once you rank up past 1Q, you enter the Don ranks. Don means step, and these ranks actually go up rather than go down as you rank up, and the higher you go as a Don player, the more incredible you are. Uh, by the way, one more thing before I move on, you'll often hear one Don referred to as Shodang, which simply means beginning Don. Alright, so this one you literally cannot avoid. Even though the term checkmate puzzle exists from chess, Tsume Shogi, or simply Tsume, continues to be used among English speakers all the time. This is just one of those words that culturally gives Shogi its own identity. It also helps differentiate between the two main types of puzzles in shogi. That is tsume shogi, which is checkmate puzzles, and tsugi no itte, which are next move puzzles where you just have to find the best move in a position. Uh, by the way, you don't really need to know tsugi no itte. Because tsume shogi has a rule where every move must be a check, it falls into its own category of puzzles that's a bit different from its cousins in chess. You probably already know that shogi openings can be roughly divided into either static rook or swinging rook strategies. Since they have easily understood English names, you'd think there'd be no need to use the Japanese terms, but surprisingly they see a lot of use. So in Japanese, ibisha is static rook and huribisha is swinging rook. I suspect a part of why these have stuck around is partly because they're fun to say, but also because swinging rook is a relatively new term, uh, it used to be known as ranging rook. Like Tsume Shogi, the term Kihu, meaning game record or game score, is a word that's so pervasive that you have no choice but to learn it. I don't think I've met any Shogi players who learned Shogi through the internet that didn't use the term Kihu. If I had to guess, uh, our community ended up picking up that term from the English Go community, which also uses Kihu, uh, although their Kihus look a lot different from ours. Well, in the chess world, they refer to these as openings or main lines. Uh, in shogi, it's extremely common for them to be referred to as joseki, which means standard move. Because shogi openings are so varied with so many branching paths, uh, we tend to refer to the broad spectrum as the opening and the individual recommended move sequences as joseki. So where you might play a game of static rook versus fourth file rook, the joseki would be the specific set of standard moves you play, such as Yamada's joseki or Saginomiya joseki. This term has a couple of English translations, but I tend to disagree with just about all of them because they tend to miss the nuance of the term. Tesuji is often translated as tactic or skill for move, but it's a bit more specific than that. 
uh, Tessuji is almost like a very localized Joseki, where a certain situation has moves that should be played more often than not. An example is the Chop Drop, or Silver on the King's Belly, or Striking Pawn, etc. This is the dreaded illegal move that every beginner has made if they've played on a board or on any one dojo. Nihu, or two pawns, refers to the rule that says you can't have more than two pawns on one file. Nihu is just such a fun word to say, and it's really simple to remember if you already remember that hu is pawn. By the way, even pros Nihu sometimes, so don't beat yourself up too much if you lose a game to it. Uh, mm. Hey, what does sabaki mean again? The term sabaki is a bit of a complicated term that has a lot of meanings and doesn't have a direct translation to English. In general, sabaki is about activating and efficiently using your pieces. This can be done in a few ways, whether it's saving a move by using a striking pawn, or exchanging a lot of pieces to gain a positional advantage, or making a series of plays that freeze a piece that's been trapped the whole game. There's even an English book about it, where ladies professional player Madoka Kitao explains it a whole lot better than I do, so holy cow, I recommend getting that book. You'll get a much better understanding of Sabaki by reading that than you will from listening to me talk about it for a few minutes. Of all the phrases I've listed in this video, in my opinion, these are going to be the most important ones to know if you ever attend an in-person shogi event, like a tournament or an event, especially if there are going to be Japanese pros there. When you start a game, you should tell your opponent, Yoroshiku onegaishimasu or simply onegaishimasu. These are standard Japanese greetings that don't quite have good direct English translations. Uh, they mean something like, please take care of me, but in the context of shogi, it's like saying good luck or let's have a good game. When you've lost the game, in order to resign, you say makemashita, which means I have lost. You can also say arimasen, which means something like there's nothing, but in this case, it means I have no more moves left to make. And finally, once the game is over, you thank your opponent with arigato gozaimashita, which simply means thank you very much. While there's nothing really wrong with saying good luck, I resign, and thank you in English, and nobody will judge you for it, uh, you will absolutely hear these phrases at a shogi tournament. And it shows a lot of respect to the history and culture of shogi if you use the Japanese terms when you play. Okay, so it was actually a bit more than 10 terms, but you get the general idea. I hope you learned something from this video, and even if you didn't, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you know some Japanese terms that other players need to know and I didn't include it in this video, make sure you leave those down in the comments. And please subscribe and keep following the channel for more shogi videos like this. I am Rico with Shogi House, and I will see you next time.